Okay, welcome everybody. So we've been putting in a lot of work with bases and B coordinates and coordinate mappings. And so now let's take a look at some examples to reap the benefits of this. So let's say I've got uh, my vector space V is P3. So these, this is the set of all polynomials that have degree at most three. And we have a sort of standard basis for this vector space, which consists of four vectors, one, t, t squared, and t cubed. And let's say we have a set of polynomials x, y, z, and w. So x is the polynomial 2 plus 2t two squared minus 5t cubed. y is the polynomial 5 plus t cubed. z is the polynomial zt minus 3t squared and w is the polynomial minus 1 plus 7t plus t squared minus 11t cubed. And we want to know, do these four polynomials form a linearly independent set? Um, because then they might give us a basis since we have four of them. And this is a really tricky question, right? I want to know, is there some number I can multiply this polynomial by and then add some other weight times this one plus some other constant times this one plus some other constant times this one so that all of the terms cancel out and we get the zero vector, which in this case would just be the zero polynomial. So that is a tricky question, but putting some coordinates into this problem are gonna help us use matrices and what we know about linear independence of vectors to help answer this question. So from this basis, we can define, we can find B coordinates for each of these polynomials, X, Y, Z, and W, um, by pulling off the coefficients from each of these polynomials. So X was two plus two T squared minus five T cubed. So the two was the constant term. We had zero for the linear term. We have a two for the quadratic coefficient and minus five is the coefficient in front of X cubed. And we do the same for the other three vectors in this set. And now because this coordinate mapping, which is gonna take each of these vectors and map them to a column vector in R4, because this coordinate mapping is an isomorphism, it is onto and one-to-one, -one, and it's a linear map that if these four column vectors happen to be linearly independent in R4, then that's gonna tell us that these four polynomials um, in P3 are also going to be linearly independent. Um, and the same goes if we find that these four column vectors are linearly dependent, that would tell us that these four polynomials would also form a linearly dependent set. And so there are different ways that we've discussed taking a set of four different column vectors and determining whether they would be linearly independent um, and most commonly would be taking this matrix uh, where each column is one of these different um, B coordinate vectors that we got for each of the four polynomials. We take this matrix and we express it in its reduced row echelon form, which I've done over here. Um, I just used Python to put this in reduced row echelon form. And from this form, we can see that not every column has a pivot. Um, column one does, column two does, column three does, column four has no pivot. And so from this reduced row echelon four matrix, we can see that there are weights that we can use to combine the first three vectors in order to get the fourth vector, right? So in particular, if we take two times XB minus one times uh, Y sub B, plus one times the B coordinates for Z, then when we add these three vectors together using these three weights, we wind up with the B coordinates of W. So this should tell us that taking similar weights with their corresponding polynomials, we should be able to get the polynomial for W by combining the polynomials X, Y, and Z with the same weights. And you certainly can verify taking two times polynomial x plus minus one times polynomial y plus one times polynomial z. Combining these terms gives us back polynomial w.
So that tells us that these four um, polynomials uh, do not form a linearly independent set. So these four polynomials could not possibly form a basis for this space.